A few months ago, I heard about Robopack for the first time, and before I'd even got started with it, I posted a video about it. Actually, if you haven't seen that one, I'll link it in the comments. It's a good overview of how you get signed up and link Robopack with your Entra and Intune tenants. Now, because I've already got that video already, I'm not going to be covering that same stuff. What I'm going to show you is how to actually go from an empty-ish Robopack tenant to having your common apps packaged, deployed, and most importantly, updated regularly. Before we begin though, why do we even need Robopack at all? What's its purpose? Well, let's look at it from two angles. The IT administrator, whose job it is to make sure apps are deployed to end users' devices. And the security admin, whose job it is to make sure that the number of possible ways to attack an organization are as low as possible. This is typically done by limiting the number of vulnerabilities present in the operating system and the software that's in use on that operating system. I do appreciate that in many organizations, the IT admin role and the security admin role are the same person, but that doesn't make the challenge any easier. Patching windows is easy, well, relatively. We've got a known regular cadence for security updates from Microsoft, it's called Patch Tuesday. Patching software, on the other hand, that's chaos. There's no commitment from an application vendor that they'll release their updates on a Tuesday once a month. There's not even a commitment that they won't release every couple of days. It's all very messy. And so we automate. Does it make sense for Adobe to release an update of Acrobat and then for every organization in the world to build their own automation that simplifies the packaging and deployment of that update? course not. Does it make sense for every organization in the world to be looking for notifications of when Adobe's patched a vulnerability so that they can trigger their own automation and deploy it to their test devices? Of course not. That's where Robopack comes in. Robopack has built that automation. They've built that automation for 40,000 applications, not just Adobe Acrobat. That automation not only automates packaging every application, it wraps it in a PowerShell GUI so that you can customize how that application update looks when it arrives on your user's device. It fully tests the installation and removal process before it even goes to your test computers. As a wise man once almost said, 40,000 apps is enough for anyone. Except it's not, is it? Most places I've worked have that annoying app they need to deploy that's sent to them on a CD or whatever. You obviously can't use Robopack for that, can you? Actually, you probably can. Um, we'll cover that in a different video. I'm going to set myself a goal for the next 10 minutes. I want to package Google Chrome, TeamViewer and FileZilla and make sure they're going to be released to my test virtual machines then my pilot computers and IT, and then the rest of my organization. And I want that to happen every time an update to one of those applications is released. All right, 10 minutes, let's go. So we're gonna start in the Intune portal because in the Intune portal, I can show you, for example, I don't have Chrome TeamViewer or FileZilla. And from here, we're gonna head over to Robopack. And we're starting in the Instant Apps section, just on the left-hand side here. And the reason we're starting here is that I can search for an Instant App. Let's look at Google Chrome. It's right here. I don't need to go into Search and look for Google Chrome because it's right there on the left-hand side for us. And I can just click it. And we get a bit of information about this as we start here. So we get the information that Google provide. So Google Chrome, published by Google, and the newest version information, the license type, uh, we also get the available versions. There's only um, one available version right now from uh, Google, but it was released on the 30th of October. Fantastic. So what are our actions? What are the next steps for us? Well, we have two options at the top here. We've got two actions. We have analyze and build or set up a RoboPatch flow. Now, I did say I wanted this to be deployed to all of my devices after going through my test VMs and then pilot devices, and that's called a flow in Robopack. But I don't want to do that just yet. I want to actually analyze and build this so that it's 
customized for my tenant. So I'll choose that and you get to see the platform. So in the, at the moment I'm looking for X64 rather than ARM64 or X86. So I could customize this browser name if I wanted to and customize the publisher, change the version number. It doesn't really make sense to do that. If I have a template for PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit, I could change that there and use a different template. We're going to go deeper into templates in a different video. For now, I'm going to leave it as the default. And it says, you can see it's going to wrap the package in the installation script using PSADT. Fantastic. So over in advanced options, you can see we've got some information about the description and also the developer. Now, I'm not a fan of it saying robopack.com. You know, Robopack did package this up, but it is actually going to be last coffee as the developer because that's me in my organization. And I also want to mark this app as featured in my company store if it ever gets to the company store. So I want to choose continue and then not import it into Intune. I just want to import this app into Robopack. So that's slightly different to what happened with an instant app. Now with an instant app, it's already in Robopack. I don't need to customize it and upload it like I'm doing right now. This in this taskbar across the bottom, progress bar across the bottom, is showing me how Robopack is doing with the upload of the content to its own system. And it's also going to be analyzing it, installing on a virtual machine, testing the install and uninstall based on the information it's got about the application. So that's all going on right now. And now that's been completed. The next step I need to take is to actually get this to be deployed to my devices. Now I said I wanted it to go to my um, test virtual machines and then my pilot devices and then my full organization. Let's set up this robo patch flow. There's a lot of options here, but I'm going to go through them really quickly. I'm on the clock here. The flow name is going to be Google Chrome. I'm going to use this app version as the start of the flow, and this is the script template. I want to automatically upload and start new deployments. So when this starts, it's going to upload it to Intune and start deploying it to the first group in that flow. Start new deployments even if the previous one is not done. Chrome installs Chrome updates quite regularly, right? And if Maybe I haven't got this version out to all of my devices yet, but I do want the new version to start deploying anyway. And with that in mind, I should probably stop this deployment when the new version is being deployed. Otherwise, that would get very confusing. So these are the three that I'm going to go with. I'm going to start new deployments automatically. I'm going to stop the deployment when a new version is added, and I'm going to start new deployments even if the previous one wasn't done. I'm also going to keep three superseded versions of the application so that I can get some history about these applications and whether they were deployed, how many application, how many devices installed the application. That's it, really. I'm going to click Create Flow, and I need to add a deployment wave. And the first wave is going to be my my test virtual machines. And what we're going to do here is if we have a minimum response rate of 100% and a minimum install success rate of 100%. I have two virtual machines. And so what I want to make sure is that both of them install this successfully before it moves to the next wave. Very, very simple. And the next wave is going to be my pilot, I can't type, my pilot computers in IT. So I would not expect them to be as reliable as my virtual machines. Some people in IT take time off. It's ridiculous, I know. But we're going to allow 50% of these to not have received it. Their computers were off or they, they weren't paying attention. And of the 50% that do receive it, I want 100% of those to be successful before I move to the next phase. Sounds good. And the next phase that I mentioned is all devices. Choose that. And the response rate, I'm not really too bothered about the response rate or the success rate. I'm not going to have much uh, much say on the success rate of this because actually this is going to be my last wave. It's going to go to all devices after my pilot devices. Very, very simple. And so that's it. I've said that it will go to my test computers first. And as long as 100% of those install it, it will go to my IT test computers, and then as long as 100% of those 
get it installed successfully, it will head off to the rest of my devices. Sound reasonable to me? I'm going to save and start deployment. That's Chrome. Done. Next, I said we were going to do... Uh, what was it? FileZilla. Oh, it's right there. FileZilla. I'm going to set up the flow. I don't want to make any changes to this one. I just want to go straight into setting up that flow. And I want to stop new stop when new versions are added and also start new deployments. I'm going to choose Create Flow. First one, as before, is going to be Virtual Machines. And the second one is going to be IT Computers. And then the third wave is going to be all devices to check the rate so this should be 100 100 this should be 50 100 and then this can be whatever really because it's not going to do anything different based on that I want to save and start deployment and that's FileZilla next instant apps If Team Viewer is here, there is Team Viewer. I'm going to set up Robo Patch Flow, create my first wave for virtual machines 100, 100, my second wave for IT computers. and finally all devices save and start deployment so that took me eight minutes um, and that was mainly because I was chatting about it all the way through I'm gonna head over to Intune now I'm gonna show you the apps that are in my tenant for Windows and let's see we have Google Chrome it is this is assigned which means it's got a group assigned to it and it's been decide, assigned to my test virtual machines so once that has been received by my test virtual machines Robopack will then detect that and when the installation has been successful it will deploy it to the next group which will be my IT pilot computers and once they've all received it successfully it will move to the next group you might want to wait a little while between those and you would have seen that between uh, wave two and three you might want to put a small wait between that so it, you can see for example we have delay after wave so I could say actually we want to delay after that wave to uh, let me edit this we'll change that wave uh, and, and here we've got delay after completion so we might make it two days we don't want to leave it too long because you know from a security perspective we want to get these updates out as soon as possible so waiting too long would be a bad idea but just to make sure that all these IT pilot computers have a chance to test it for maybe a couple of days that's probably a good idea and I can do that on the fly because it's gonna make a change now for the next application that gets deployed and for the next deployment that gets made for this application. So I'm just going to save this, head back to Google Chrome. You can see that it is done for Google Chrome. We'll head down and find FileZilla. There is that one. And also we have TeamViewer is not just there yet. Choose Refresh. And there is TeamViewer. Now Google Chrome was the one I slightly edited, wasn't it? I actually went in and changed the uh, developer to last coffee from Robopack. So like I said that took eight minutes and if you've ever tried to package and deploy Google Chrome or TeamViewer or FileZilla or anything and get them deployed to a single group of devices you will know that each of them takes at least five minutes and that's if you're well prepared. I was anything but prepared for that and I managed to get it those deployed and ready to be deployed to future groups when certain thresholds are met and that will happen every time the app is updated 
in eight minutes. If you haven't looked at Robopack yet, and if you haven't delved into some of the features that it has, just give it a go. It's completely free to try. It, it might even be completely free for you to use in your entire organization, depending on the size of your business. Give it a go. It's definitely changed how I do application deployments. Try it. See you next time.